Okay, the recording has started. So I think I was asked, like Ramit, probably yesterday you had a discussion with her uh, about what actually needs to be implemented at, uh, in terms of what is refund about? Like, what are we refunding? Was that the question? Or does anyone know? Like, is it clear what that refund is? What is being refunded and how that would be structured? Was there any question yesterday or discussion? It's very hard to get information from this patch, it seems. Yeah, Basile. Uh, hey, you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. So basically on the stand-up, we were asking Rahmet, uh, uh, I mean, you can't get money from the, the you know, the driver's account. Uh, it's impossible within a blockchain system. So what kind of penalty would be, like, what would the penalty look like? And for example, there are there are mentions of scores and and even with routes. Uh, like, do we track the routes and do we penalize in the routes? But what what do you mean by penalize uh, in terms of refund and things like that? It wasn't it wasn't clear. So that was basically the the discussion that we were having. And and uh, a bit more of a clear explanation would be very nice. Okay, great. Yeah. So I think that's. Um... Thanks, Basile, for making it clear. Yeah, exactly. That was what. So instead, I think the, the way to think about it is the first is the there is a physical money. Uh, this is basically you are not be able to control within the blockchain. And other things you can do is to, you know, either through a token and exchange and all that. But for now, for this project, it is sufficient and it is very key. If you think of it that the company is transporting something very valuable, that that the Ethereum cost is is much more smaller, right? Um, if you are transporting something very very valuable, gold, or for example, banks transferring millions of beer from one area to another area, so then you can think this starts making sense, right? Uh, because one just delivery is so much worse than whatever exchange you are paying in ethereum as well as the security and reliability you get now also if you think it's not they're not your employees they can be another company like for example a gold mine is transporting you know some tons of gold from a location to another location and the transporting company is different than for example the bank usually the, they are the ones who, who receive goals or for experts so if, if you think of it that way then it already gives you that the transaction cost should be smaller and the trust is much more important right and now but i am gonna so that is much more of for thinking but i'm gonna be explaining just for the employees employers like a normal driving without specifying what that what that delivery is and how expensive it is. So the first thing you can think of it is that that the salary or any other part this person will get. So the salary for an employee is the same as the amount of the total amount of payment if it is a contractor, right? So you now lock. So there is a smart contract. Both agreed with a smart contract, and then the person that the the company in this case we will label that the company. The company then puts a certain money that will be paid to the employee. Uh, it can be in this case for simplicity, let's call it this is their salary. Their salary, again, just making it in, so it's about five eight ether that they will get. This is locked. But actually, their salary could be uh, three ether, while the two ether is for successfully delivering. The two ethers are much more reward. Now, you agree that if they perform, the, the agreement is performed 90% or above, that means every, you know, the route or whatever setup, or in this case, just for delivery. If it happens on time, so within, let's say, if the delivery happens within the specified time, within 
five seconds or 10 seconds uh, only uh, difference, then they get all of the all of the five ether. That is, that's basically the, the, the company has locked into the uh, smart contract because a smart contract has an ether account. That means it can receive an ether. So that's called the escrow account. So they get that account and it's locked. Now the, the script, the smart contract has you now decisions to make. The first decisions it will make is that, you know, if, you know, it's written, it's a rule that if the employee in this case, the driver in this case fulfills every condition, they get the entirety. That means the five eater will be transferred to their account. So now count the number of accounts. There are actually four accounts involved. The first account being the smart contracts account. The second account being the employee way or the company, the employer or the company account, which is transferring first the many things to the smart contract, including the ether amount. And then there is a device account, which is actually say, sending uh, the actual, the um, what do you call the GPS coordinates or any other information. And then there is the employee or the driver account that is actually receiving the final money or the final amount when everything happens. So you see like there are knowing exactly which, you know, that what are the accounts, accounts involved are this. Now you can, of course, include in principle, the device account and the, uh, the, the driver's account can be the same. So that means it can be the same address, but at least register these ones as four accounts with four variables in your code or because that, that makes it much more uh, robust. So then when the very first time it starts, the basically the company account sends ether to the smart contract, we call it five ether. Then the device starts sending information and then uh, this one counts, it can be, it, it can actually make it for every data it receives, uh, the smart contract can actually divide the money and sends like whatever, or, or you know, send some money to the employee or the driver account. That is up to you, your implementation, or just only the final, it, it counts some amount. And then when the date expires, it, it can be, you know, it, it can only do the actual ether transaction at the last minute, or it can be for every transaction. So that's up to your decision. So, but for now, for simplicity, it only registers one, you know, success and failure and counts. So that means you only just ultimately, it will decide the ultimate decision is based on time. So that means the there is agreed time, you call it the deadline. After the deadline, it computes how many tokens, how many actually perform it, you know, as considered good that means for example if the device doesn't send any data at a specified time you also consider that one bad or the device sends a wrong uh, a wrong location that's also bad and then if only the goods are counted in the good counter or that means that you know fulfilled fulfillment the other one is unfulfilled account now of course you can just for simplicity that you can take the ratio how many uh, from the expected how many are good that means and if for example you can say 90 above 90 percent after the deadline the driver actually then gets all the five eater if it is between let's imagine 75 percent they receive four eater if they uh, actually 60 percent then they receive three eater now three eater i told you is their salary the punishment happens if they, for example, if it's below 50%, maybe you send them only, you know, like between 20 and 50%, you only send them two ether. If they don't send any data, it doesn't work, then the five ether will be returned. Whatever is, of course, remaining will be returned to the, in the company, right? Let me stop there because I have said everything that I wanted to say. And is that clear? Or is there any question? Brahan. Um, okay, am, am I audible now? 
Our audio. Yeah, there is a background noise, but we can. Yeah, there is a background noise, but we can hear you. Go on. I'm trying to distract you from that. So, um, my question is: in the documentation, you said now like it's some kind of delivery, and then whether they delivered on that time, and then uh, on that specific location. So, but the earlier the, the documentation says like if that driver stays in that area for for some amount of time, you're gonna reward it. Otherwise, you're gonna punish it in some way. So the, the reward and the punishment makes it very clear. So if it were, uh, let's say, as you said, it's five years, so if it doesn't obey those uh, restrictions, uh, we're going to deduct on that amount that is going to be paid. So that's, that, that, that makes sense. But my question comes to the point that are we, are we doing in a way that whether that person reaches to that point, let's say I have his uh, latitude, longitude, location, data, which means that there has to be in that time, in that location, and then there is some tolerable, tolerable time range from that starting point, let's say it's 10 minutes. So if the driver arrives there in that 10 minutes, will be rewarded. Otherwise, if he's late in some way, is that, is that the logic behind? Because in the requirement, it says staying in that specific area for some time range. And now what you're saying is a little bit different. Am I wrong? No, I, I think it's not different. I think it's a general versus the specific. So if you can mute, Bran, uh, when you don't speak, so there's a bad, which, okay. So you, it all we are asking is three things. From a code perspective, you know, from interpretation perspective, you can interpret it million ways. From a code perspective, there's only two things. There is time stamp, like at each time stamp, you send a geolocation, right? Uh, latitude or longitude now it's up to you to compute to turn it into oh like that means staying in that area for example now that the the geographic locations that it is sending within one hour of that period between let's say on january uh, on on march 9 between uh, 8 pm utc and 12 pm utc you know that's that's what you are setting in the contract and then Basically, what you are comparing is exactly at what time the geolocations were set and then where they are. Now, you can exactly what is uh, what is in the challenge document means you have to check that for that three hours you are required or four hours that are you are required, the geolocation hasn't moved. And they must be sent, of course, specified that you must they must send them in every 30 minutes interval. That's it. So that means you have now, you know, eight data points, each with timestamp and geolocation. And then you, the smart contract checks their validity. If the goal is actually saying staying in that period, okay? And if it was the same thing, the same data point, if the goal has changed now, it's a longer pass. That means they must change location and, and they must be getting closer and closer to a certain destination. It's the same data. The data is the same. The goal is different. The data that needs to be sent or the one that you are implementing is it doesn't change even if the goal changes. It's the computation of the goal that changes. Does that make sense, Brahan? Um, yes, but okay. Okay, let me um, say it again and then if there is something missing, you'll tell me. So um, what you're saying is like we have that target, which is goal which is being set by the employer so if that driver is in that area uh, one more thing is that um, when the task is let's say when the driver well, there will be a time limit for you right so at that end of time that driver is going to be rewarded or punished or get paid with a punishment or not. so my question is there will be are we updating the because every um, Nasrallah was saying that every track, everything, every write, which is writing music or updating is costing. So, like, if you're updating in different time interval, let's say you said 30 minutes, and then if I want real time update, let's say in one or two minutes, uh, that's going to be costing in the Ethereum for sure, right? So, uh, do we need another system for, for now? For now, don't worry about. 
like as that's the point don't worry about the ethereum exchange rate like forget that because i mean okay there's an echo so brown i have to mute you can speak yeah so you must forget for now the ethereum cost like the exchange cost and only implement so the employee like the employer which is a company that's probably for them the transaction cost can be very cheap so think of it only on that way we will not go for any other just small delivery you know just delivering only an, a value that is a 300 beer item we will not will not care right we will not go to ethereum so for now forget the cost sorry, sorry. And, yeah sorry go on. But um, so me and Virhana were discussing this matter actually in a different format. So let me try to interpret uh, for him also is that um, basically everything, everything in related to blockchain communications or Ethereum, if it's if the value is actually writing in this case, updating the editor vault or adding an additional value or uh, changing the value of set variables, we have to pay a gas fee. So my question actually is not concerning the cost it's actually does the employee need to bear like how the ui in terms of the client side or the user experience will look like if the employee need to pay for every one minute for again 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 forget that part the cost just just so that you can simplify you can imagine the device is given to the employee for to the driver by the company and every transaction that happens is charged to the company so the reason is i think the more you think about this from a very normal perspective it gets very hard no one would would use ethereum for small items or they would use a much cheaper another alternative the logic will stay the same the only thing is that because the device is now whoever pays that that's why we have four accounts the device has an account it, it is a very different account than the employee uh, who receives ultimately their money reward or punishment right so in this case i would say to simplify don't really think too much about who pays the gas fee there's going to be enough gas fee inside and they they get it gets paid because to the device account maybe the employer has already because they want to con you know this is called running cost this is the company needs to to use this and therefore they pay the running cost okay so yeah that that element let it be so that you focus only on the logic there are four accounts and there's there are the data are not going to change whichever goal is changing the data is going to be timestamp agreed time, on agreed timestamp uh data to be received and the data basically is a timestamp and then coordinate points so longitude and latitude this is a scheduled it's either an automated one or the driver is for now for simplicity just the driver is pressing the red button at those times within a range that's it and then the data is sent okay so that and then the goal for now you can choose the goal either stay in one area or along a certain time but for now for simplicity we chose it for you you know consider it just only staying on a certain area okay but but the the point is that the logic doesn't change it's the, the the goal is changing because ultimately the data point doesn't change it's going to be for every data point there's going to be a timestamp and then a longitude and latitude yeah and just and, just just uh one more question sorry uh when you say timestamps and uh, and the creations of of rewarding um, why we should why we should give it to the driver instead let's focus let's give it to the admin part so the admin will create will create a time stand including will no, plan no, to no 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 no, no. So, it's just the device so the device the employee in this case we assign the name we call it a driver that mm -hmm. employee you, you don't like that one must send data so that that is the the point that they they must send data so that means the device, which is a reliable thing that is tempered proof, is going to send to the, you know, what is providing data. The smart contracts takes those data and the data, when we say data, there are only three columns to this data or three points. It's a tuple of three points, a timestamp, a longitude and latitude. And, and when they send, the smart contract has every other information 
to know to receive or not because you know it if it comes from this account then from this device account it knows it's for that person and updates the right thing so every other thing is controlled by the the, the, the smart contract what's in the smart contract is written either by another account you know company or the company uh where we're talking like you know what we call company the employer so i think you should only focus on that one because this is really going to simplify and then it's going to be a more general than trying to really solve one specific problem there's a timestamp an agreed component and then you know a goal in this case our goal just that we define it to be staying in a certain area for that all you have to compute is you know okay the time stamps for all the points must be must be within that time and then the geolocations must be around within a certain area that's it so that's the goal is implemented that way i hope that is very clarifies the point and then let's ask let's see abdul hamid has a question like let and i assume um for you uh both nasrallah and uh Brahan, you have a clarity at least if not just start typing it and then i would uh I would also talk about it, but let's go to Abdul Hamid, just so that I don't want to take all the time from Nathaniel's um, tutorial. Go on, Abdul Hamid. Okay, so so my question is, like you talked about calculating the percentage and giving some ether based on some percentage. So yeah. what exactly is the condition for calculating the percentage? I mean, I, I, it's a simple strategy I gave. You can use any other strategy. All I care is like, that, you know, the smart contract defines that exactly what I'm saying now. When you write a smart contract, you write it with a certain idea, right? Now, the goal can be defined. Let's imagine a goal is also another variable that is written in the global uh, scratch area, right? And that goal maybe is codified. If a code is A123, then it means executing a certain module an if condition you can think of it it goes to that if condition that means or a case statement if the case is the goal statement is a one two three then it it's it, it basically the way that it it uh, computes the the time stamps you know the three tuples basically the three element tuple is just a, a certain way for now we only defined one case because one goal and that goal is staying in a certain area now how long Let's imagine, as I said, it's four hours, and then the data is being sent or expected to be sent at every 30 minutes. That means eight times. Now, eight times compliance, you can call it compliance, the compliance ratio. The compliance ratio is that, is it within that timestamp? Yes. Is the geographic coordinate within the area that we expect or not? Yes means now. So the two yeses gives you, okay, compliance is equal to true one so there is a compliance counter so now now let's imagine the compliance is counting the comp and then the non-compliance counter whenever there is a, a non-compliance but that means either the time is off or the coordinate is off then the non-compliance now you have two counters when then now the time arrives the last time arrives if now it it is you know the time has changed because the last uh, the deadline for example at the deadline this thing will be called by some condition then it will then okay it knows now it needs to reconcile everything because time has you know time has already moved and therefore then it will just compute at that time call it a crone will call it like for this case somebody will call it to do to finish then it goes it takes because of the goal it knows then it computes uh the ratio and based on the ratio it either returns, you know, whatever needs to be returned will be returned to the to the the company, the employee, the employer, or whatever is give will be given will be given to the uh, driver, the employee. Yeah. So so for those eight uh, for those eight pointers, there will already be there will already be set like a, a guideline. So for example, compliance uh, exactly. Yeah. What 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 do we what do we mean by compliance or not compliance? There's only two two variables, compliance or not compliance. So so at P1, for example, at point one, yeah. uh, it will be stated that this uh, driver should be at this uh, point yes. and its timestamp should be in this range, right? Yes, exactly. So for every eight points, we'll be calculating that and at the end, exactly. 
we will just be disposing yeah. depo uh, depositing the um, value whatever yeah whatever then yeah based on the, the goal is like at eight times if it's like 100 times is expected you know that they must all the 12 or all the eight points must be in compliance state then you know you, then you transfer everything if not for example a simple goal is that they must respect all the points eight points must be in compliance if there's only even a single non-compliance then no transfer so that means for with that strategy when the states change to non-compliance you don't need to wait the next state you'll basically transfer the entire money to the uh, company you basically the companies gets the money because one non-compliance is observed but if it's based on a ratio that means like there is tolerance then you have to wait until you receive all the eight points all right thank you thank you yeah okay and mubarak okay uh, the first question will be uh in the document uh, it mentions about uh, ERC20 token uh, about the reward uh, system. So, when do we apply that? Will be my first question. Yeah, because when you transfer from one account to another account, if you are using you know through the uh, the network, the network is ERC20 is the network. Like basically, you know, basically if you are transferring. A dollar from the US to Ethiopia, what happens is that it goes through a certain protocol. In this case, we might be using SWIFT. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's any transfer of uh, Ethereum assets or any element, then will you, you use the, the common one? Because so, the, the basically, that, that is a protocol, like, you know, in which network are you sending? So, uh, if we send the base salary and uh, with the uh, uh, reward, we always use the ERC20 token. Yeah. So whenever, yeah, whenever you really do transaction and not calling, so when you call the smart contract, it's a very different transaction than when the, when you are transacting between two. Uh, and then when and also some companies might choose the their Ethereum to appear not on on a one network but in another network so we chose just the arc20 network yeah so transferring fund requires a certain uh, protocol or uh, the network okay uh, and there was a discussion on the stand-up uh, when there is a delivery there is uh, there will be a starting point and uh, a destination point so uh, when we think of about uh, calculating uh, if the person is, if the person is uh, on the area, do we consider uh, the route to or we just I consider? Think, as I said, it is no different. It's just a goal. The goal could be just staying on a certain route, and all you do is, is in that eight route there might be eight points. You want like you want do you expect from a starting point to the end point you the driver it, it will take you estimate that it will take uh, four hours now the but driver like, must update sorry uh, like a checkpoint on the road yeah, exactly so in the checkpoints at eight checkpoints it will have to uh state its its um time stamp and geolocation okay and then the, the rest is the same so the data is not going to change whether it's a route whether it's you know across time or you know it, it doesn't change there's only we expect only three points to be sent at a either scheduled or unscheduled again you know scheduled means that it's either every 30 minutes or we expect at least a minimum eight points or like that you know so, so the goal is for now we simplified it so that you really can understand just the basic logic you know, don't get confused by every other possibility. The very logic is that send, timestamp and geolocation, and define the goal to be staying in a certain area, and then uh, and then transfer some amount when, once the deadline has passed, and compute mm -hmm. compliance and non-compliance in between. Okay. Yeah, okay. is that super clean for everyone? 
so that I took, okay, I think it seems uh, the case. Otherwise, everyone also will uh, read it, go on. So like I have a small question here. Uh, that is uh, on the first, I was assuming that we're going to calculate for all drivers. So all the drivers, so the employees will have different direction to go to different place to deliver in diff different time interval. So I think what I understand now is can we consider that a specific place or a specific time interval in order for, we don't know the number of drivers, but all the drivers are supposed to reach uh, that time interval and that specified yeah. time. So exactly. only one. So in this case, really think of one driver and one thing because the scale, the, the rest doesn't matter. Like, because if you if you assume now 10 drivers, that means you associate 10 up device accounts for each of them and you know then there will be another management that it will manage it, it should be it's parallelized complete trivial parallelized if you do it for one then the second one like whatever you might you might think you you are going to be deploying the same smart contracts different you know uh, n times or one smart contract can handle all the cases using its global area so that means it will check when when it receives data it checks for who it is and updates the area accordingly okay. and because this is on a network you know it's a, a parallelized computation so every computation doesn't depend on others unless you spend of course that's a very complex area but we don't demand it that you could be thinking or between different drivers there might be relation but that's a complete complex network we want just a very simple trivial network one you know the smart contract checks for one driver and that's it and then the rest will be parallelized accordingly okay so okay. also uh, we're going to decide whether to make the uh, to make the reward based on a ratio or uh based on yes. like exactly we're going to so, decide for so. exactly you can you can decide and if you want if you don't want to decide you want us to decide think of it as everything so that means you have to wait for all, like, at least the only one, uh, I mean, let's call it, you have to wait until the end to make the decision. So that means you expect eight points, and then after eight points, you decide. And you decide now based on uh, a ratio. And the ratio is nine, like, you can think of it as a school grade, 50%, 75%, and 90%. Above 90%, everything. Uh, 75 and above uh, 75 to 90 is um you transfer like let's say 80 percent and then 50 percent and above the 50 percent again and i mean and then the rest you don't transfer if it's below 50 percent they fail that means they don't get anything okay brian this one will be the last and then i will leave it. okay um not, not much of a thing, but asking again the same question. Like, let's say you said to have eight checkpoints, and then eight checkpoints will be uh, the from the device from the driver device. We're gonna get the time stamp and the geolocation, and then we're gonna count whether the compliance or non-compliance, right? So at the end of the so on each eight points, we're gonna update our uh, smart contract state, which is also again another cost. So. We just don't worry about that and just do it in such a way or what is yes. uh, you, you, you can think of it you can think of it you might find a way to you know that actually there's a way to call when the time you know or from another account from somewhere else okay sorry i think your, your background you have to mute you have to mute that okay so you have to you can imagine the last point when it receives which is the eight point it will decide so even if it was sent uh so you expect eight points and at the eighth point you would uh count and if not basically there will be a reconciliation somewhere else for now you, you imagine just that that uh i think it's it's like more of a schedule and uh, uh, here i i don't know maybe nati can can say that Ethereum can actually call, or if you ask it, if you allow it at a certain point to be called or finalized, it's more of a, a callback. At a certain time, it can be called to finalize. Uh, 
Nathaniel, maybe do you know if there is uh, such thing? Okay, uh, I hope you you can hear me. So I think uh, in that case, uh, you can just uh, collect it. For example, initiate an action based on some uh, some criteria. So for example, uh, for each employee employers, uh, an employee can uh, generate the 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 results based on the data. So you can make it as, for example, uh, it can be initiated, but I'm not really sure about like if, if, if it can be scheduled or not, but you can initiate it from somewhere. Yeah, exactly. So the, the reason uh, there is one in Binance P2P, so there is one thing called, you know, if you know Binance, then there is a peer-to-peer -peer network and it does something similar. It locks the account. If you are buying something, it locks the account uh, or the amount that you are buying and then you transfer to that person through a bank transfer or anything but it has a time limit so that means after 18 like let's say 15 minutes if no one uh, claims it expires and therefore it returns the, it releases the money i think the very similar thing they do is what we we want to do after the timestamp counter there is a timestamp counter and the times you, you know it's getting slightly complex so you should forget it but if not, uh, if you want to think of it, there is another smart contract that is allowed, that's that's counting, that heartbeat of this, the that it sends the last, the, the beginning and the last, uh, on a specific uh, specified time. So basically, or I think I imagine, and there must exist, that actually the Ethereum, like you can schedule for the smart contracts. No, the smart contract must be called by a user account to start initiating. But you can initiate it first and it can start counting and operate for a time. So that means I don't I, I think there must be a mechanism that you can start and stop it. Stop means when the time expires, it does the final computation. So you can check it, and if not, for now assume there's some very simple mechanism to do it so that means you know you will get the device and then send the last one and then it will do the computation so simplify it there because i don't want to yeah so that maybe the admin can call uh, as abdul Hamid is saying but do something simple not complex there because i think there must be um, yeah there must be a mechanism Okay, so then Nati can I start. I think Ikram and Reddit, you, they were, uh, there's a transfer, uh, an exchange deliver and reach the destination within a given time range. But what about the penalty? The penalty, I think, yeah, maybe Reddit has answered. You will check whether the employee is sending his location frequently and not as bad compliance. Yeah, so if you just, Ikram, just as a simple example, if the non compliance is above 50%, that means a required compliance was eight. And then, but uh, what we found is only uh, three compliances. Uh, no, the required compliance, for example, is four, and the actual compliance is three. Then you say, okay, you know, you're not going to transfer anything to the employee. That basically punishes it because, in principle, that you can imagine what was there was their, their salary, and they didn't get any salary for that amount. So you can think of that as a penalty. I hope that's clear, Ekram. Okay, then I will stop here. Nati, you can continue. I hope that's clear. If not, we can talk tomorrow as well. Wonderful. Thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, Yavi. Uh, so I will try to show you a quick demo for the uh, smart contract part. So I'll show you how to create the contract and also how to uh, how to check if the contract is inbound or not or for 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 the demo purpose i just implemented an inbound and outbound condition so which means if we have a uh, certain geolocations and we have uh, some radius so if that particular a employee employee is out of out of bound it will be it will not be considered and otherwise it will be considered just share my screen and show you. I'll start from the 
creating parts and yeah. So uh, So I think you can see my screen, so uh, just press it. Mm. So now we let, let's uh, let's assume you all have uh, MetaMask installed on uh, your browser as an extension. So, so as you can see here, I have MetaMask installed, and uh, you can connect it into a test network. So I'm using this uh, Ganesh as a test network, as you can see here, and you can just set this one as a uh, to to work on a on network, which means uh, you can go to settings and just go to server and uh, pick on all interfaces. And after that, it will learn. And yeah, that's basically about how to start the test server. And after that, you just need to add this one account to your MetaMask. So in the MetaMask case, just go to the show you so in the metamask case you can see here i have network so i added uh, ganesh at uh, as a local network so you just click add network and you can add the current network so add network manually and after that you just give it a name and the rpc url would be the url i just showed you here or the rpc server here and the chain id just uh, give it a default one, which is I think thirteen thirty seven one three three seven. So and after that, this currency symbol is just use Ethereum. So and after that, you, you hit save and it will be available. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, it is the for Ganesh part. It is Ethereum on running on local host on port uh, seventy five forty five. And after that, you set the chain ID as thirteen thirty seven. And yeah, okay, the chain ID as you can see here. Uh, you can check uh, what is the chain ID used for. So you can see uh, the chain ID is used for signing transactions. So it must mark the chain ID is done by the network and also use zero x prefix hexadecimal number. So which means the uh, address. So after that, you just uh, add your, uh, you can see here, I have uh, my account in ends with 59C, so 509C, and you can check it, it's the same account. And you can see here, I have uh, around 99.99 ether. And after that, you can move on. And so next, we need to create a contract. So let's just see how to create a contract. This is just a simple UI to create a contract. Let's assume this is from the admin side. And as you mentioned last time, uh, I will just show you where you can actually implement the, the reward or the penalty one. You just create a simple button, and that button will call the contract that is written in in solidity so you just have to create the contract in, in that case and call it from here so i will just uh, add uh, an employee name so let, let's just say like Villa and let's just give it an address uh, let, let's just use this one for now and let me use uh, i have one uh, contract written so let me use the same the same locations for now for simplicity purpose and I'll just give it a long and like latitude, and after that, I'll just let, let me just give it a 20 meter radius. So uh, after I click, I click submit, as you can see, I will be required to. Uh, so now here to note that there will be. Uh, so for example, one issue that might that might arise here is, uh, as you can see, uh, for the pop up, you can see here I'm actually paying. The gas fee and also you can see here the amount plus the gas fee so if you are seeing you are paying zero each other, so which means that your the metamask and the account and the, actually you, you didn't build you didn't build the, the smart contract uh, yeah. correctly so which means that uh, you will face this issue so after that you, you, you to to bypass that issue you just need to build your contract and uh, make it available in your 
front end. So as you can see here, above, we have two, two employees, which are Ababa and Rekila. So as we can see here, we have the two, and we can see here the view details. So you can just add here uh, a button called uh, just check check validity or not. And after that, based on all the records or based on your logic, you can apply or you can deny or uh, approve any request. So for example, I have been trying it this one. So I'm at 44 meters and away from the center. And as you can see here, using the map, you can see where exactly the, that person was located. So it's, which means it is inbound since it is green. And I will demonstrate it is this one using the mobile app, uh, the, mob the mobile app version of this project. And I will just show you how to add an address and how to uh, somehow register those, uh, these records. So for this one, as you can see here, uh, I just added this contract. So I won't have any, any records at all. So let me just share from the mobile part and show you how to record the data. So let me just stop sharing this one. So uh, let me just share my screen from my mobile. can see here uh, I'm sharing from my mobile so this is just this is a mobile app so I will just assume I'm an employer I'm, I'm an employee and let, let me just make sure this is the same address as a, as you can see here it in C1 so it's the second address I'll just press next and as you can see here where my location is and uh, as you can see there is a switch button on the on the top right, and as as, as I press that one, uh, okay. Let me just check if there is an issue. Okay, I think there is a, uh, an issue. Let me just restart it. So after it's built, uh, it's building. Uh, so I'm just re running it in a debug mode. So. Let's just wait a few seconds. So it's just built using Flutter. So uh, as you can see here, I'll just paste and I will just turn on. And as you can see here, as I turned on, I, I can set, check my location. I can check my location and uh, for that I can see where uh, if I'm inbound or not. So in this case, I'm way outbound from the location since I entered a 10 meter radius. And after that, you can just turn off, turn off this one, and we can check the history. So since I'm in the, um, since I'm just sitting in a single location, there is no just. I I only have one one pin, one uh, map pin. So if you if this person was moving, you can see multiple pins, and let me just show you from the from the employer side. So, uh, so after that, we will just go to for the let's just check the killer side. So as you can see here, I'm fifty six meters away from the distance and. I'm outbound, and you can see here in the in the map part. As you can see, the first one is green, and the, the, the outbound is implemented on range one. And if you zoom in correctly, or zoom if you zoom in enough, you can see uh, all the map pins are uh, overlaid on top of each other, which means that that user was just sitting there.
so you can actually check that by using um, by checking all the locations and also you can see here the latitude and the longitude I, I, I was being so you can check here and after that you can just add another button to call the reward and also the penalize button right here so this is a simple implementation using solidity uh, react js and the, for the mobile app using flutter so I know it, it was a quick one, so it, I, was, I just wanted to show you uh, what you can actually uh, create with this and what kind of uh, language you can use. And from the solidity part, I think you can just create, uh, you can just create, uh, you can just create the checking part or the penalizing part, and after that you can actually uh, uh, be sure it is actually uh, rewarding or penalizing that current employees. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, and, and if anybody has any questions, you yes, are welcome to ask. Okay, go on, Abdullah. So, Nati, did you use MetaMask? to connect your mobile apps uh, user account to the smart contract no i just as you uh, on the demo i, I input uh, the same uh, wallet address so which means the wallet address that was in the, in the test environment so i just used that so i am using uh, the same abi which means uh, the same uh, so while you are building uh, your smart contract using Truffle, you will have uh, uh, the build the build in a JSON format. So you use that as a, uh, on the both on the React and the Flutter app, and after that, it will actually be it will be they, they will be communicated uh, properly. If not, they, they will have they they will be talking on different uh, smart contracts. So you make sure you have the same JSON file on your Flutter app and on your React on the React app. So the first step is to, to write the smart contract and test it. After that, build it in a, which is the network environment uh, would be in a dev mode. So after that, just uh, copy the JSON part, the same use the same JSON on the React part and on the Flutter app. In that way, you can be sure. Uh, so the reason why I'm uh, why I didn't connect. Uh, using my mobile app is the employee doesn't have to actually be connected it, they just need a, a wallet address so they can manage that part on their own but if they are not connected it should work properly meaning that they, they are not paying the gas fee as you as you have seen earlier the gas fee is paid by the employer not the employee so that's why mm. But but wouldn't the device need to like to interact with a smart contract? There needs to be an address set, right? And the oh. device needs to have access to the private key to actually call and have a transaction with a smart contract. Yeah. So one one another way is to, for the private key part. You you have to make sure while you are creating the app, you you might need to use a, a static private key. So if if you connect uh, the app properly with MetaMask, you can fetch the private key from that. But if not, you have to put the static private IP, I mean, private key of the employer, which means while interacting with a smart contract, that private key will be used. But for, registra for registering all the, all the locations and all the data that you need to submit to the smart contract, you use the the employee's address, not the employer's one. But the employer's one would be used for for the uh, any gas fee related uh, issues. Okay, thank you. So. So anybody have any questions?
Okay, go on a bit. So Yabbegon mentioned uh, something about routes and uh, uh, what type of map to use to use uh, this or is it the built-in Android SDK or something? Uh, I want you to kind of explain how you get the maps uh, service on your Flutter app. Okay, for the Flutter and also the React app, I just use Mapbox. So you just have to uh, get an API key from Mapbox. And after that, you just on the Flutter side, you have to pass that API key. And also for the React part, you just have to pass that API key. So it will be. Uh, is, it, is it free? Yeah, Mapbox is free. Got it. So can we kind of uh, the route? Um, for the route part, or any any routing algorithm is not free. I, I, if it's efficient enough, it's not free. Which means that while you are creating a route on to, for uh, two different points in a map or in a geolocation, uh, there are many things to consider. So uh, it's not that cheap. So creating a route would, would be a problem here. So uh, another way to create a route would be is just uh, for now you can uh, just record all the all the steps taken to reach from point a to b uh, it depends on your implementation but one way to go about that is to record all the all the locations of the driver from starting from point a to point b and after that uh, if you are creating a uh, if to check if some driver uh, is following a certain route that you uh, that you want them to follow, so you have to create a different kind of logic. So in this case, we you have to make sure on your route you are creating uh, those points. So for example, let me just uh, share my screen and show you on a Google Map how to how to uh, how to solve this one for free. So for example. Uh, so th this is the route so for example uh, let me just zoom out a little bit and you want uh, the driver to take this route not this route so you have to create uh, an, an entry point for each one so so at some point in time the driver has to exist here so for example as you can see uh, on this one uh, let me just go back to the map view as you can see here, this is a red dot, right? So, but in the in this in this case, you, we have a green dot. So, let's just assume you move this button on the road side, the road side, and you create tone like uh, all uh, necessary necessary points that are needed on the route. So, for example, if it's uh, a twenty, uh, for for example, if it's a hundred meter, a uh, hundred meter. Uh, 100 meter route so if it, even if it's not if it's not a straight line 100 meter you just create those points along the way or for all the uh, 100 meters or for all the routes and after that you just check uh, if this person was inbound for each uh, for example let, let's say you created 10 points so you just check if if the driver is inbound at some time at some time in that in in all ten routes, so you can be sure the person actually took the took the route you the, you want them to go. So, for example, you are creating one point here, one point here, one point here. I I, I hope you can see my mouse. And let's say you are creating one point here uh, at, at the cursor, and you, you just created here, you created here, and after that, uh, let's say the route is from A two up to this A two. So if the driver took another way around to, to, to get to this point, all the records on this location would be outbound. So you are sure the driver didn't take the correct route. So you can solve it in this way, but if you, you, you are just complicating your task by this point. So just try to, as Yabi mentioned earlier, try to simplify while you are implementing this project, try to sim simplify, simplify it and just understand how to how the smart contracts work.
So uh, is that clear, Abir, or? Yes, yes, it's clear. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And Abdullah, Abdullah Hamid just shared a free route API, so you can also use that. Okay, go on, Melat. Okay, um, my question is, I don't really understand how, um, doesn't the driver need their own wallet so that they can, uh, we can transfer the money to them? How, how does the uh, payment operation goes? I don't really understand how that, how that works. Okay, uh, so in the beginning of uh, my, the demo, I, I've just, I showed you the, uh ganache uh window so we just uh lot of accounts so as you can see here we have multiple addresses right so these addresses are wallet account wallet addresses so you can assign this one or the, the it's just a test network but in, in the real case you get this address from the from the employee or you just you create one an address for them so for this purpose let's assume this address belongs to one employee. This is just a test network, but for any uh, Web3 uh, wallet app, you can just create a wallet address, right? So you just use that address, but you have to make sure you are you are on the same network to to actually uh, make the payment. So if it's an Ethereum account, okay, it's not. If an, it's an Ethereum wallet address, okay, it will work on. The same also if not it, it, it won't be it, it won't work so you have to make sure you are i'm just using this one because i can be sure i'm on the same network i'm on the ethereum one so i can be sure of that so you just consider those points while you are creating that but uh, unless uh, unless otherwise you just you won't be able to make the payments or make any transaction to that particular wallet address. Just make sure you are on the same network. And after that, just for this uh, project, you can use the test networks and also you can deploy it on a test network. So you can be sure all the all the wallet addresses you are using are using the same uh, blockchain network. Now is that clear, Milat? Yes, it is. Thank you. Anybody has uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, so if anybody has any question, you can reach me out on Slack. Yeah, thank you guys.